It's Flip Through Friday, and I have a fabulous little flip through for you. Hey, it's Care. Welcome to Matic at the Lake. Just finishing this up. I did a craft with me video, and it's up on my Patreon if you'd like to see more of the process. And I try to offer as many tips in those videos as I possibly can. What I'm doing and why. Why it helps. Maybe some new ideas for you. And they're at a kind of a leisurely pace. They're not sped up. They're in real time. Uh, I have some of those coming to the Krabby Crafter Clubhouse as well as Patreon. And they're different videos with different projects and they're just all a little bit different. So if you're looking for something, you know, if you just want to sit around and hang out with me for a little bit, <laughs> a little bit of time, grab a cup of something and craft along, there are craft with me videos on the Krabby Crafter Clubhouse and Patreon. I did most of this on Patreon. This is a wonderful little journal that Christina at Christina's Shack sent to me last year, and I'm finally getting to make it into a journal. Of course, because of the doxies on it, at first I thought it would just be my mini dog journal or for little dogs or something, but then as time went on, I decided I wanted only dachshunds in, and they're not easy to find. <laughs> So I, I had a collection from, of images from books and magazines and catalogs, but it wasn't enough. So I made a kit on, that wasn't enough. So I, I added an extra page and that extra page has some fun facts about doxies and some cool quotes about them. And what had happened is I, I laid out all my pages and then as I was gluing them, discovered that I missed entirely two pages just completely missed them so I had to go back to Canva find some more pictures I AI generated some pictures some steampunk doxies and added like I said some quotes and some fun facts and just got some pretty images some more pretty images so I'm just gonna glue these pages together add a few small embellishments and then I will give you the flip through. Now funny, I was using this glue because it's one of it's it's a better glue than Elmer's school glue or any kind of purple washable glue. This is I always thought a little bit better. But last night after finishing this project and letting it sit for several hours and I decided to work on it around midnight, this image was glued down and I was able to pull it it was right here in the center of the bottom of the page. I was able to completely pull it off with no damage to the underlying page or to the print. That kind of that kind of freaked me out. <laughs> it worked out beautifully because I was able to put this guy here. However, uh, that makes me a little worried about this glue. <laughs> How is that possible that it was glued pretty well and then sat for hours and I could just pull it off? It worked out, so I'm not complaining, but I think that's an interesting tidbit of information. Okay, I had this all set up how I wanted it last night, and you see that I've jacked it all up here. So I will rearrange it again. It's here gathering dust because I haven't done this kind of work in a really long time. This was a gift from my dear friend Leanne. It is called a book bone. It is by made in the USA and it is a veteran owned company bookbones.com and they're just flexible silicone rubber heavy enough to weight down a project and pretty flexible which helps made it like a faux Polaroid so I have one piece from the digital kit that I don't have room for I was just gonna glue this piece down but since I need a home for that, I'm going to glue this onto a scrap piece of paper because I have it all glued up <laughs> on the back. And that will make this a little bit stronger. I'm just going to grab something nearby. This. I don't know what it is. And it really doesn't matter. And I'm going to glue this to that. So again, it makes it a little bit sturdier cut that out using my big girl scissors, not my stork scissors, not cuticle nippers. 
I have a video on the Krabby Crafter Clubhouse that is a rant about the size of implements people use to do the essentially size does matter it's a video about that and it you know it's one of those things that sends the crabby crafter over the edge <laughs> yeah and of course because i'm focusing on it after that video i see it a lot more it's not very thick so i'm going to go ahead and do that one more time just to thicken it up now that i've decided it's going to be a pocket it's going to be a really nice thick hearty pocket a sturdy pocket I'm using the straight edges of the paper rather than putting it in the middle. I've seen people do that and I don't understand it. They'll put, To glue something down, they'll glue it right in the center of the page. Not only do they have now four sides to cut, but two four sides to cut screwy. If you have a straight edge of a pre-cut piece of paper, Use that, then you only have two chances to screw it up instead of four. Okay, I think that's thick enough. I think that's good and plenty. This is the quote that I don't have room for, so I'm going to put some brown on here and some black just to jazz it up. I will read you the quotes as I do the flip through. I'm also going to put a little bit of black soot on here. Most of the doxies in here are black and or brown and so a lot of my stuff has black and brown on it. I'm just grunging this up a little bit to grunge it up a little bit. Now if I wanted to I could back this to make a tiny little journaling card. I'm not going to do that. If I want to do that later I can. I should use the metal tip for this, but it's out soaking in the kitchen. So I want to leave the top open and I'm just going to put glue along. My metal tip is soaking. This tip also needs to soak. It's clogged again. And I broke my pin when I was making this. I pulled the pin out of my little pin holder where it was glued in i had glued it in and let it sit for way too long and i broke the pin i don't have the patience all the time to do it this way i i just don't i want stuff to work the way it's supposed to work but in a pinch this works beautifully see it's already taking about four times longer than i would like it to take that it would take if i had the normal stuff but this is what we're doing so my three sides are glued i'm gonna put him in kind of low so that there's room for that quote to sit in and not necessarily hang out over the edge. Uh, these last two pieces are going to go on the back. I cut them apart. It's the de definition of dachshund, dictionary definition of dachshund, and I like the way that it looks together. However, because of where I'm going to put it, it needs to be apart. So I cut it apart. While I prefer it the other way, I am good with it not being <laughs> that way. That is going to go here on the back. I don't want to cover up any of that little dog any more than I have to. I probably will have to with the dictionary. Although I tried to make it as small and I cut it. So yeah, I don't have to cover up any of the beautiful little beastly that's on this coffee cup. I don't know if I mentioned that. I did mention it's from Christina at Christina's Shack, who is also the host of Flip Through Friday, by the way. She is the host of that hashtag that we all love to use. And she is the creator of this coffee cup journal. It is a to-go cup. That's what to-go cups look like in Australia. Not like here, where it's just stupid advertising. Starbucks with somebody's name written on it. She sent me another one of a Frenchie, which is just amazing. But she didn't make that one into a coffee cup journal, and I'm glad because I just leave him out. I just set him, I just set him where I can see him all the time. He sits right here and keeps me company in the craft. I just love him. He will probably remain just as he is. There. So the other thing that I wanted to do is I have a whole bunch of beautiful ribbons that can go here. He has some red, so I can put some more red. I have this red paw print ribbon. I don't have any Fabri-Tac. I am going to have to get my 
glue sorted out because I'm not doing the toothpick method the rest of the time. Okay, that's cleared with a orange wood stick, a pin, a tiny, I mean like the shortest pin that was ever made. And I'm gonna have to make a new pin. I have some, I think they're stainless steel two inch pins that make the best pins for art glitter glue lids because they're, they get way down in there where this one is just barely gonna get into the regular tip. Retrieved my metal tip because I'm gonna be gluing small things. So I need small amount of good glue. Now I, I think I'm just gonna put pieces of this randomly throughout. I don't want it to compete with my Beasley, just enhance him or her. Spraying ever so slightly. I'm gonna snip that loose piece off and make sure to put some glue. You can also ever so gently i think i'll do that just because you can glue it and that should stop the fraying there's a product called fray check that is good for that it's designed specifically for that but it's polyester which means it's plastic and it will melt so if you just touch it ever so slightly on that end the ends that you cut it won't fray either but you got to be really careful you can't you know you don't want to set the ribbon on fire because i just cleaned all this out there's a lot of water in my tip in the metal tip and in the regular tip so i am just doodling with it to get the water out you can see that it's real watery glue versus glue glue i'm just getting that out because water is not going to help my ribbon stick to the page and i'm just making sure that i'm getting the glue part. Please don't forget to like and subscribe this video. I am working toward 5,000 subscribers by Christmas. That gives us one month and 25 days. So please share these videos that you like on your social media. Send them to your crafty friends. If you've watched more than three of my videos, please hit the subscribe button. It is free, costs you nothing, but a few seconds of your time. And if you don't turn on notifications, they won't bombard you. But do turn on notifications because sometimes you won't know that I've put out a video. And God knows you don't want to miss any of those. <laughs> when I started like the mustard, if you don't shake it, you get that nasty mustard juice. I should probably shake this. Who knows when my, I don't remember the last time I used my art glitter glue. All right, enough dawdling. Let's get some glue on the page. All right, tip's already just irritating the shite out of me. May have to invest in one of those teeny tiny little bottles so that it comes out better. Use my little spatula this time because when I took the tip off, she came out like a like gangbusters. So I'm gonna use my little spatula to get some glue where I want my ribbon to go. You know, putting ribbon on should not be this complicated. Good God. All right, and I'm gonna have my right there. And there's just a little bit of overhang. I'm gonna let it overhang at the top and the bottom. And I'm gonna bring it right over to that edge, the edge of that coffee cup page. Of course, they don't just do dogs on the coffee cups in Australia. She's got all kinds of beautiful different prints. So this, this is a little dull over here. I'm just gonna take my, my fine liners because they're nice and deep black and just outline it a little bit. Many of these I'm using for the very first time. These are from the Dollar Tree. I don't go there very often anymore, but when I do, I always take a look at the ribbon just to see if they have any new patterns. I'm gonna use this sort of like washi tape because I don't have any pet washi. Easy way I have found to open these. Oh, this one I got at St. Vinny's for 99 cents. Looks like Dollar Tree stuff, but it's from Michael's, so it's not Dollar Tree stuff. Anyway, when I open new ribbon, I find where the where it overlaps, where it, the ribbon begins, and I put my sharp scissors there. That gives you an easy in and doesn't damage your ribbon. More page edging. My friend Leanne brought me this 
little friend to keep me company in the craft room. She said you had to have him. Little Frenchie. Of course I did. Thank you, Leanne. I think I'm going to do a small... I'm just putting glue on the ends, folding it in half to make a page tab. This is hiding something under there. Cute, cute. We're good with that. Because there's a lot of red here, I think we can get away with a few red paw prints at the bottom. When I want something to stick really well, I put glue on the page and glue on the thing that I'm gluing. And I let them both set up for just a few seconds, 10 seconds, as long as it takes me to explain this little bit to you. And that seems to ensure far better sticking. So that's been sitting there a couple of seconds. This has been on here a couple of seconds. And then put it on. I'm only doing this because I can, because I want to use my little ribbons and because they have these little blank spaces. Because of the pegboard, I could go ahead and do something with dots, maybe down here. Of course, the pegboard is far more accurate and symmetrical than my dots, but that's all right. There, that kind of ties it all together. I love having my markers here. I moved my markers from a drawer where they were in their boxes and in bundles by type. I moved them right there into these beautiful jars that I can just grab whenever I need. And I'm using them way, way, way more than I ever was when they were in their boxes because they didn't want to mess things up. I didn't want to take the time to take them out of the drawer, take them out of the box, blah, blah, blah. And now they're just out. They're just out all the time and I get to use them all the time. So this one, any of the ribbons, this one would go good. This one would go good. And this one would go good. Hmm. Such dilemmas. I have quite a few dog stamps I could use here too, but again, I'm being a lazy crafter. Ah, uh, they're in a box. They're in a tote or two, and they are over there behind a whole bunch of stuff, and I'm not going to get up and go get them because I'm a lazy crafter. And that sucks because I have a lot of really cool dog stamps that I could be using and am not. Very excited about maybe rethinking, redoing the whole craft room again, but hopefully this time is it. We'll see. We'll see. I think we'll use the, the gold bones here on the back. And I find that overlap and stick my scissors right under there. Anyway, I, th I thought it'd be a dog journal, of course. And then I thought maybe just a little dog journal, maybe just mini pictures, small, like a small glue book of dogs, or maybe just a collection of small dogs like Frenchies and Dachshunds and little dogs, Westies and Maltese and little guys. And I thought, no, it's a doxy cup. I want it to be a doxy journal. So this is now a doxy journal. I have a craft with me over on Patreon if you want to see the making of it. Not the journal, of course, Christina made that, but the, the making it into a collection of goodies, that's over on Patreon. It's a real-time video with no ads, if you'd like to go over and see that. Anyway, now we're just to the flip-through part of it. I could add more, I could add more doodles, I could add more stamping, but I'm going to call it done because the whole idea of this project was to start and finish something. Because most of my projects are ongoing, large huge projects and to have something small doable and finishable is is really handy so this is where we're at and i think this is going to be done unless i find more doxy stuff this is from a book called knitting for your dog i made a doxy digital kit and these little snippets are from that this one says because i waddle when i walk should this give rise to silly talk that i'm ungainly What's ungainly? I'm really rather graceful, mainly. The experts have been known to state that there's a twinkle in our gait. 
One said, they have a clumsy grace, which after all is no disgrace. My funny features may abound, short legs, long body, low to the ground, but I'm about the perfect pal for man or woman, boy or gal. I'm gentle, very playful, kind. I housebreak fast, cause I'm refined. I'm smart, but never sly or foxy. No, do not underestimate the doxy. Cute. I don't know who wrote that. This just says little beauty. This is from Amy's free fall digital kit for our hashtag using the same images fall season project. It's all seasons project, but this is from her fall collection. Piece of ribbon. There is a digital kit attached to that craft with me video. It is available for those who are just doxy dominated. <laughs> you can buy the post if you want to have access to that particular. I will put the post up for sale so you can just buy that if you'd like and get the digital kit and the video. Bonus. This is Pablo Picasso and his lovely dog Lump who is the subject of his own book called Picasso and Lump, A Dachshund's Odyssey by David Douglas Duncan. Of course, I didn't want to lose that bit of information, so it's just tucked up under there safely. It's a little page tab. Mostly just for interest, not for organization in any way. It's a little angel halo because Sadie Ann is blind. Here's another one. This is from the AKC website. Dachshunds typically live between 12 and 15 years, longer than most do dog breeds. Of the numerous dogs to hold the Guinness World Record for the oldest living dog, several have been Dachshunds. A Dachshund named Chanel held the record until 2009 when she died at the age of 21. In 2013, another Dachshund named Scully, who also lived to be 20, held this title. Dachshund. 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 Late 19th century from the German, literally, badger dog. The breed being originally used to dig badgers out of their sets. That's not necessarily true. They have a little bit darker past that goes beyond the use for badgers. Funny, they rebranded, I think it was the AKC information too, that I don't know who rebranded, but somebody rebranded them from horrible Nazi dogs to badger getters. And so now they used to have a different name, but now they're dachshund badger dogs because they were rebranded way back when. They are fierce hunters. I can attest to that personally with a horrible story that I will not share here. <laughs> I love this because that's a coffee to go cup with a dachshund on it. AI generated by a prompt that I put in, just like this coffee cup with a dachshund on it. So very meta. I liked that idea so much, I did it myself. This is a, an AI Im generated image that came up with a blank coffee cup and I just added, I just added clip art to make it look like it's always been there. This one says, just a little doxy walking his owner. Because it's a Halloween costume for the owner. A blow up Halloween costume. He is walking his dog, <laughs> but it looks like the dog is walking the giant Thanksgiving Day Parade balloon. So cute. This is one of my favorite images in the book. A little doxy bush. This one appeals to me no matter the breed. When I am old and gray, my step might be slower. I may not hear as well. I may not see as well, I may not feel as well, but my love will be the same, my devotion will be the same, my appreciation will be the same, my heart and soul are grateful for all that you have done and that you do when I am old and gray. That just breaks my heart. Despite their small size, dachshunds are brave and fierce. No lie. Dachshund. 
a half a dog high and a dog and a half long. A little dachshunds. There is nothing so beautiful as the art, grace, and love of dogs. And in here, and here there's a quote from the author E.B. White. Someday, if ever I get a chance, I shall write a book or warning on the character and temperament of the dachshund and why he can't be trained and shouldn't be. I would rather train a striped zebra to balance an Indian club than induce a dachshund to heed my slightest command. He be white. Dachshund. Noun. A gorgeous, long-bodied dog breed with very short legs, beautiful coat, and the cutest personality. They have the heart of a lion, the brain of a fox, and the body of a sausage. <laughs> and with that, I bid you adieu. Please go love up your beastlies. Give them lots of extra treats and time. All they want to do is be loved and spend time with you. And they're here such a short time. Even 20 years, 21 years, isn't long enough. Forever wouldn't be long enough. My take at the lake, out for now.